Do you get frustrated when trying to sew your princess seams together? I'm going to show you four steps to ensure success. Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, whimsically referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. You know, when you're sewing princess seams, princess seams generally can go into the shoulder or into the armhole. Whichever direction they go, you're going to end up with two opposing curvatures, shall I say. Some curves are more dominant than others. When you do the shoulder seam princess line, it's the side panel that gets the, the dramatic curvature. When you're doing an armhole princess line, both of them have dramatic opposing curvatures. One's concave and one's convex. So we're going to take a look at how to sew the four steps that are going to ensure success when you are sewing your princess seams together. This, by the way, is a half-scale bodice. You'll find these in free stuff at surefitdesigns.com. Just go over to the shop tab and scroll down till you get to free stuff. There's lots of good things there, but all of our half-scale bodices are available for you. So I've just done a couple of little samples here that we'll take a look at. And this would be an example of a shoulder princess seam line. This is the center front panel, and this is the side front panel. You've added your seam allowances, and now it's time to sew those two panels together. And if you're wondering how I got to this step, at the end of this particular video, I'm going to give you a playlist of how to design princess lines. So here we are trying to sew the seams together. We've got matching notches, which of course help. When I put the right sides together and I match my notches, I'll put a pin in here. And then you can see what's happening automatically is this panel is curving off one direction and this panel's curving off the other direction. If I start up at the shoulder line and match those matching notches like this, now you can see exactly where the problem becomes. I can't get these two matching notches to sit well and to get the cut edges together. And why is that? Well, it's because I've got two opposing curves. So let me take these pins out and show you exactly what to do. So we have a shallow curve going this direction and over on the side panel we've got the dominant curve for your bust line. Now the bigger your bust, the bigger this curve is going to be. So here are the steps and here are the tips for success. Number one is you must make sure that you stitch some stay stitching a half an inch away which is four eighths of an inch or 1.3 centimeters for all of our international metric customers. So I've got my stay stitching in place and I like to do it on both sides. But this side, the straighter side, is the one that you must now clip. So tip number two is that you are going to clip into the stitching like this and I usually clip about every half inch as close to the stitching as possible. So now when I put these two seams together, watch what happens. I'll start pinning as if I was sewing. And of course I would be sewing at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm just starting from one end and then the other and then I work my way to the curvature. And look what happens. These clips open right up and allow my seam allowances to meet one another. I guess I should pin this way like I started off with the other pins. And now that seam is going to sit beautifully with the other seam. So that's a little bit bulky. So let's take a look at a finished sample. So success tip number three is that you must then sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. 
and you can see that that's just in beyond the original half inch stay stitching. I usually sew with the clipped side up and that's so that I can see my clips so that they don't get turned over underneath the feed dog and then get sewn incorrectly. But again, you can see there's my 5 8 inch stitching done very, very carefully on the seam allowance. And tip number four is that you must press all of this over top of a tailor's ham. A tailor's ham is one of the best pressing aids that you'll ever have. It's going to help you to press all your curvatures and darts properly to fit your body. So that's how you press it. So that's tip number four. It's very important to press properly. So now we've taken a look at a half scale bodice. Let's take a look at a real size one. Now, as I said before, princess lines can go into the shoulder or into the armhole. But when they're going into the armhole, they can be anywhere within the curvature of that armhole. Some go into the center, as I have done on the right side of this test garment. And other arm side princess lines can go in up closer to the shoulder line but still end at the princess, uh, excuse me, at the arm side line. So as we take a look at this side of the bodice, we see an arm side princess line going up towards the shoulder. Now, this one is the easiest to sew because I don't have as dominant a curvature there. But when we take a look at this curve right here, now you've got a very dominant concave and convex curve that are sewing together. And the bigger your bust, the more dramatic those curves are going to be. So it is vitally important to stay stitch and clip to the stitching as I am showing in this sample. And then you might say, well, what do I do to finish off the seam allowances? Of course, after you've pressed them. So I'm going to bring in one of my princess line blouses. I'm sorry, it's a very heavily patterned fabric, so it's a little bit awkward to see this, but we're going to take a look at the inside. And there is the princess seam right here. And number one, I have surged the edges on my overlocker to neaten that seam allowance. Of course, I have pressed it well over the tailor's ham, and then I top stitched it down. And as we take a look at the right side, there's my top stitching right here. And that was actually done with the cover stitch machine. And that is the underside of the cover stitch finished stitching line. And it kind of looks like a honeycomb. I just thought that was a nice decorative piece to add on top. But of course, you don't have to stitch them like that. The jeans jacket that I am wearing, I've just done double top stitching. So there's lots of options for you in terms of finishing off your princess seams. But if you follow those four success steps, you're going to have success with sewing your princess lines. I would like to encourage you to watch the princess line series that is in uh, the lower right hand, whatever corner that is of the video screen, there's a princess line series that we've done to show you how to design your princess lines. And also, if you haven't already, please use the subscribe button and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.